If you're looking for a prime lens to shoot weddings and you're not sure which one you should get, you are in for a treat. Because a couple weeks ago, Sony asked me to provide them photos from a bunch of their different lenses uh, from a wedding scenario. So I set up a shoot and I tested out all these different lenses, 24 mil, 35, 50, 85, 135. And I thought, this is amazing to show like head to head comparison of each of these lenses and what kind of different effects you can achieve with them, you know, having the same scenario. So what I'm going to show you in this video is going to be the same frame taken with each of these lenses, and I'm going to explain the differences and what is better. I'm also going to show like a full set of images taken with each of these lenses. So after this video, hopefully you'll get at least the idea which effects you like more. Hey, and that's not all because I'm celebrating 1000 subscribers here on YouTube. So at the end of the video, I'm going to do a really cool giveaway for wedding photographers. So make sure you don't miss that one out. Okay, let's get into it. Hello everyone, my name is Magic. I'm a wedding photographer, a Sony Europe ambassador, father of four children and welcome to my YouTube channel that I'm mostly covering topics about, you know, gear, weddings, photography in general. So if you're into any of these topics, make sure you subscribe to the channel. And yeah, just like I said in the intro, a couple weeks ago, Sony asked me to provide them wedding photos from a bunch of their lenses. And some of these lenses I've never shot with. So I thought, okay, the best way to do it is to set up a style shoot and take all these lenses and, and you know, and take some photos. But yeah, but in this video, I'm not talking any specific lenses to Sony. I'm gonna talk more about general focal lens and prime lenses differences. So what I'm gonna be comparing is gonna be 24 1.4, 35 1.4, 50 1.4, 85 1.4 and 135 1.8 so you can get this type of lenses for basically any system whether you're a sony shooter or any other you know canon nikon maybe not fuji because you are these are crop sensors so it's not gonna relate one to one but if you're shooting full frame cameras uh, you probably you probably can get any of these lenses for your system Okay, let's start with 24 1.4. First, let's look at the set of the images from that shoot. So 24 mil, it's a wide angle lens. I find it quite challenging to shoot with as you have to be very aware of the surroundings. So uh, when you shoot portraits of a couple like, like this, like what you see here, you'll get a lot of background in the frame, which in some cases you can use to your advantage, but in other cases it may create a lot of chaos in the frame that you kind of lose control over. It's much harder to isolate your your you know your subject from the background as you're kind of looking at the whole scene unless you get really close you know to the couple for example like here but then there's another danger you have to be aware of you know the effect that the whole perspective or like this distortion will create so if you have a uh, people you know like couple bride or groom on the edge of the frame it, it might just get really distorted and look very unnatural and unflattering um, so that's something that you have to take into account when shooting these photos. Like often when I shoot portraits with 24 and get a little closer, I tend to keep my couple in the center of the frame. So I avoid this, you know, effect of, of, of getting them wide on the edges. But you know, shooting with this lens also gives like a lot of different opportunities. Like for example, these two shots, I think these are, you know, the best representation of what fast prime like 24 1.4 can do and you cannot achieve this effect with any other lens. So you get that background really wide and you can really showcase the interior like big huge windows in this uh, frame. Me, I personally use 24 mostly for um, dancing shots, which I have another video of, how, of my explanation of how I use 24 mil lens, uh, link in the description, make sure you watch this. Um, but I shoot some portraits with it and then I shoot a lot of documentary photos with it you know when I have tight spaces or when I want to show a lot of stuff in the frame 
but the lens that I use most uh, for, for all of this stuff, so like documentary type of photography and then the portrait is 35 prime lens. So here, let's look at the set of the images from a 35 1.4 lens. You can definitely see that with 35, you can shoot much closer. And I'd say it's rather safe to keep your subject even on the edges of the frame. And what I particularly like about 35 1.4 is that you can easily get that subject isolation while still maintaining you know that wide angle kind of cinematic look in the background also with 35 mm lens it's easier to control the background so now let's look at like the same framing the same photo uh, with 35 versus 24. So what I was doing here was uh, having couple standing in the same position and then I was moving away when mounting, you know, a tighter lens. Um, I, so my goal was to keep the couple, you know, in the same place of the frame, in the same size of the frame. So you can see like what is the difference between two of these and you can clearly see a different compression in the background. So 35 gets you less of that background in the frame you know the background gets closer also you get more blur in that background even both lenses were shooting at 1.4 so wide open um so yeah so i'd say it's much easier to control whatever is in the frame in the background if i would need to choose you know one photo that is kind of unique to 35 because you want to achieve it with 24 or 50 it would be this photo so when you get a little bit closer to the couple um, and, and you keep them in frame while maintaining that way, wide angle uh, look, I'd say like it's impossible to have it with 24. It would go too wide. And then if you would change to a longer lens, like a 50 millimeter lens, it will go all straight. So you will lose that wide angle feel in the background. So for me, 35 mm lens is always my number one lens, uh, always on my camera, on the right, on my straps. But on the second camera, I always have a 50 millimeter lens. And now let's move into 51.4. So I know a lot of wedding folks using either 24 plus 50 or 35 plus 85, you know, combo of two primes. For me, I tend to use 35 and 50 because the difference for me is enough to have a different look of the images, but also I like to work really close with the couple. So that's why 85 is usually non-go for me. And let's take a look at the photos I shot with 51.4 on this shoot. So you might notice one, one thing that there is a lot more vertical photos here because this is how I often frame with 50. It gives me those straight lines and I can easily, you know, isolate my couple from the background, you know, kind of having that more intimate, uh, you know, situation happening in between them. And yes, a lot of stuff that I shoot with this lens is gonna be vertical. And with 50, I often shoot a lot of, you know, single portraits with this lens as well. It's, uh, you know, the vertical portraits of just bride or just groom. I also often try to frame my subject in the doors, windows, and you know, can keep that visual mathematical OCD with symmetries and stuff. With 50 lens, it's really easy because all the lines, as I said, are gonna be straight. And that's the biggest difference for me between 35 and 50, that 35 will always give you that little bit of a wide angle lens, uh, while 50 will always keep the lines straight. And speaking of the difference between 35 and 50, let's look at these two photos. So that's again, the same, the very same shot that I had between 24 and 35, but now I made a few steps back and mounted 50 mil lens on it. So you can clearly see even more compression, you know, both foreground and background are a little bit more blurred. The background gets a little closer and also we'll get some more of the stuff in front of us in the frame. And you might think that the 35 and 50 mil difference is insignificant, you know, only 15 millimeters. But for me, the difference is enough to have them both on me for most of the stuff I shoot to have like all this wide kind of angle feel cinematic photos and then a lot of those vertical portraits and, and those photos mixed up look really good. Uh, for me, if I would choose one unique 50 mil shot from from this photo session, it would be this one. So I shot this standing on the other side of the table. Um, and you know, I have nice first layer of blurred like the table and the flowers and all the decorations, then the beautifully isolated couple and then totally blurred background. 
and that I'd say is a unique shot for this lens because if I would go with 35 I would have more wide angle uh, you know feel I would have a lot of more stuff in the foreground so that table that I was standing you know at the end of it would you know I would have a lot more of this in the frame a little bit less blurred because of less compression and then background also would be a little bit less blurred and much more stuff would be visible in the background you might say okay but this is a shot you could get with 85 sometimes yes but for example in this particular scenario I would need to move really you know back from that table and probably would need to stand on the table that was behind me because I was standing in between two tables so that's always that thing with 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 the longer lenses that you need that space to you know to make those few steps backwards and sometimes you just don't have this space and also like 85 would give you a much more compression yeah and with that compression that would be the perfect description of 85 mil lens so now let's take a look at the the, the full set of images from 85 mil lens so you'll immediately see that all the frames here are much tighter um, so shooting couple portraits you need to have that space to move uh, a little bit back and then it can give you beautiful images beautiful compression of foreground of background beautiful isolation and then if you're shooting that lens on a wedding day you get that extra reach so for me personally I use it a lot for the situations like speeches or ceremony that is outdoors that I, I can just be farther away and just capturing the emotions of people or reactions of people not getting close to them so that 85 for me is that telephoto extra reach lens but then for the portraits and all the stuff that I shoot indoors it's quite difficult for me to shoot 85 because I never have that space to move back or and I'm never happy with the frame that's why 50 is a better lens for me but 85 again will give you that beautiful isolation beautiful compression beautiful blur and if I would you know take one photo from this shoot that perfectly show you know the power of 85 mil lens it will be this photo so the compression uh, here creates that amazing isolation and also whatever was in the foreground here gets way bigger and you can use it to frame your photo and then let's look at the one photo that was shot with both uh, 50 and 85 so now I moved even farther um, back I mounted 85 on my camera I shot it uh, and you can see you know that background getting way closer now also again the foreground getting bigger and there's a lot of more stuff in between me and the couple now and then 135 as my last lens that I tested on this shoot so for me 135 is kind of exactly what 85 is and then you get even more of that extra reach extra compression and extra isolation of your couple from the background so with 135 you have to be aware that sometimes you might uh, want to have that amazing you know isolated shot so maybe couple you know cheering after the ceremony and you want to move farther back so with this lens there's more danger to a lot of people might get in between <laughs> you and whatever you're shooting and block the line of sight for you so you have to be really far away to take like a full portrait like the full full person but then if you are able to do it you get like amazing result so let's look at 135 versus 85 mil lens in the one photo you can clearly see that compression even you know bigger but I was really far away and in that frame you can even see one more table in between me and the couple so that's what I mean when I talk about you know more people possibly blocking your line of sight you are really really far away if I would you know choose again one photo that is unique to 135 it would be again this maybe this tight portrait um, that you can get even that even more of that compression um, in the foreground and the background to frame your photo with it's going to be quite similar to the effect you can achieve with 85 but you get that little extra blur in this photo so now let's see them all from 24 to 35 to 50 to 85 to 130 
5. You can see how big is the difference, especially let's look at uh, 24 versus 135. You know, this is kind of the same frame, they're standing in the same position, but you're achieving like completely different results and both are nice. And at the end of the day, it's nice to have at least two of these prime lenses. So one for this wider scenario, so maybe 24 or 35, and then one uh, longer one, maybe 50, 85 on 135 depends what works for you better so i hope this video was helpful you know showing all this different stuff in the one shoot if yes please feel free to share this video it will help me grow my channel and produce more videos make sure you're subscribed to the channel and speaking of subscriptions now time for the giveaway that i promised so um so a week ago i reached 1000 subscribers Thank you so much all my friends uh, for joining me in that YouTube journey. So my goal with this channel is, you know, to bring a value for wedding photographers, for wedding photographers, mostly shooting Sony, um, as I am shooting Sony to show you different lenses, to show you different ways of shooting. And that is why this giveaway is for wedding photographers. So I'm offering a website or portfolio or a blog page critique to two people so two people can get one to one critique with me online and in order uh, to to do it the only thing you have to do is to go to my instagram uh and comment on my last post with a wizard emoji so i know it is you and then i'm gonna you know scroll and just find two people that i will do one to one website critique with so good luck to all of you thank you all for watching and see you in the very next video bye